Today we're in Soho at Silver Lining Opticians. It's a vintage and independent eyewear store. It's one of my favorite stores. I buy most of my glasses here. And today we're actually talking about a watch that is really lore within watch collecting circles. It's the Paul Newman Daytona. And today we're here with Andrew Shear of Shear Time, who's going to walk us through each reference of the Paul Newman Daytona. So Andrew, tell us a little bit about who you are, what you specialize in. I've been buying, selling, and collecting vintage Rolex for about nine or 10 years now. It started out as a bit of a hobby and slowly turned into a passion, borderline obsession. I'm always on the hunt for the next rare and interesting watch, and I often find myself immersed in the Paul Newman Daytona. It's a cult classic, one of the most iconic of all vintage watches. So Andrew, could you run us through each reference? The first Paul Newman Daytona is the reference 6239, which is actually the first Rolex Daytona. In the mid-60s, Rolex decided to come out with something that they would call the exotic dial, which we call today the Paul Newman dial. Produced in either black or white, the dial would have three different colors. It would have a step in the register. The numbers are in this sort of Art Deco font. It was made from the mid-60s to the very early 70s. And so the actual watch that Paul Newman himself wore was a 6239. Did wear a 6239. With a white dial. With a white dial. Sometime in the 80s he wore it on a cover of a magazine and Italian collectors picked up on this very quickly and soon started calling this watch with the exotic dial the Paul Newman Daytona. So the first one is the 6239 which is steel bezel, pump pushers, and then the next reference would be the 6241, which is essentially the same watch. It has the same caliber, 722. It comes with the same option of either the black or the white dial with three different colors. The only difference is the bezel. The bezel is made of acrylic plastic. It actually gives the watch a totally different look. Black bezel with the black dial and the black bezel versus the white dial. And the, the 6241 is considerably rarer? It is. Most people favor the black bezel versus the steel bezel just because it gives the watch a bit of a bigger look and it is often favored by collectors. And sells for a little bit more. It does sell for a premium. And so after the 6241, we have kind of a weird transitional reference. The 6262 is sort of the next generation. It's got the new and improved Vajou Caliber 727. On the outside, the watch looks practically identical to the 6239. The dial is slightly different, but very similar. Just like we have the 6239 and the 6241 sharing the same exact watch, just different bezels, the 6262 has a brother, the 6264. So this gold watch? The gold watch we have here is in 18 karat gold, 6264, caliber 727, available only with the black bezel, and the dial could be black or champagne. It's interesting. These two in particular, I think, are really, they're seldom seen, and I think the 6262 in particular is kind of underappreciated, you know, made for one year. Absolutely. Between the 6262 and 6264 was probably the rarest reference ever produced by Rolex. And then finally, we have kind of the, the kings of the Paul Newmans. This is what people think of when they think of the Daytona. So here we have the 6263 and the 6265 Oyster Paul Newmans. Rolex would use the transitional 6262 and 6264 to create their last and final great Daytona. The, the 6263 and 6265 would have this new and improved caliber 727, but they would feature screw down waterproof pushers. The case would be a little bit thicker, a little bit beefier, and the overall look of the watch would just be a little bit larger. And probably the most beautiful dial the Rolex would ever produce. The Panda dial, the two color dial, is just absolutely striking. So in recent times, we've seen really phenomenal demand for Daytonas in general, let alone the Paul Newman. At Christie's in November, we saw a 6263 black dial sell for over $1 million. How has that impacted demand? Is the market different now than it was a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago? Absolutely. The market is at its highest point now. And I think these watches, which are true cult classics, holy grails of all vintage wristwatch collecting, They've just become a must-have for most serious collectors. The watches are absolutely beautiful. They can be worn every day, and they just have so much history behind them. 